that behind me is the sea. We are in sunny, sunny Goa. I am completely inappropriately dressed for Goa. I know I should be in a pair of shorts and some slippers and some flip flops on that beach right behind me, sipping a drink. But this is far more important for me because this is the new Hyundai Ionic 5. It's the electric car by Hyundai. And this sort of makes all of that better, isn't it? Because there's no smoke, there's no pollution. It's cleaner, it's greener. It makes all of our lives when we go and sit on the beach a lot nicer. So, let me quickly take you around the Ionic 5 because this is the first time that we've really got our hands on the car in the truest sense because the last time we saw the car, we saw it at the gateway of India in Mumbai, right? We're going to drive this tomorrow. You might see me in a slightly different shirt and a slightly different pair of trousers, maybe later in this video, maybe not, but we're going to drive it for a very short time. So this is like a, like a very quick first drive, even quicker than what we normally get to do. It's an Ionic Iconic car. Is it an Iconic Ionic car? Ionic Iconic? You know what I'm talking about. But it is rather pretty. Now, one thing that a lot of people did mention was we think it's an SUV or a crossover. In the video or in pictures for you guys on the screen, this looks like a hatchback. A lot of people are going to say, oh, it looks like a Lancia Delta Integrale from the 80s. But I think it looks rather different. It looks like something out of Tron. It looks like something out of a sci-fi film. And that's because this was supposed to be a concept which just got made into production. And that's great whenever people do that because that means the designers get a bit of a free reign, isn't it? So this doesn't really need to be here, but it is because why not add a second line in? And while they're at it, they added a bit of flair the flared wheel arches and you know what it looks like it looks like a bit of a typhoon happening or it actually looks like a lens sort of opening up if you can if you can put like a visual on the screen there and the same thing with the wheels as well and those really really cool my favorite wheels in the whole wide open world are a set of bbs lms bbs rs gts classic bbs wheels right that looks as close to a BBS wheel in a modern, a super modern aero interpretation as it can get. There are so many cool bits around. Actually, you know what? We're going to come back to the front because there is a little bit of a cool feature that I think has been skipped out by me. Squares, rectangles, pixels everywhere. This should have been just called the pixel. Although I think Tata Motors would have had a bit of an issue with that. But everything is sort of squared out. All the lighting elements on the car look like little pixels. And I'm going to have the camera follow me. If you actually go around and look at the rear of the car, that's where things get really pixelated. Not in the form of this video turning into 140p. Although I think I'm going to get my editor to put it there for a second. Editor, 140p video for about one two, three seconds. No, let's go back to high resolution stuff because this looks like it's pixelated, but it isn't. All these little light pieces. In fact, you know what? I'm going to start it up. Don't move. Look at this. Look at all these little light pieces. Everything's pixelated. Everything looks like it's... Imagine all those sci-fi writers in the 1970s imagining what life would be in 2023. This is what they would have come up with. And this is what they've sort of taken forward. I think it looks fabulous. Let me turn on the indicator. You see this? Again, squares everywhere, rectangles everywhere. I'm going to turn it off now because I'm, I'm going to otherwise look like one of those older school automotive journalists who used to make sort of first look and walk around videos with those hazards on. Really not cool, guys. And of course, remember, don't put your hazards on when you don't really need them. Let's have a look at more squares, more design elements. Come here. Okay, filler cap. Not a filler cap, a charge cap. I'm going to have the camera come in a lot closer, okay? Here you go, more squares. You press it, this thing opens really cool. And look at this, more squares here. This shows you how much charge is left. It's like an old Nokia phone. Remember those little bars on the top, squared out, pixelated? That's what this looks like. And of course, there is another square to shut it all down. Nice. Cool, isn't it? Almost squared out, almost curvy, but still it's a large car. Push start that little button 
it has a start button unlike a lot of other EVs coming today which don't have start buttons and I don't understand why you can't put in a simple start button thank you Hyundai you still as conventional as we would like it to be okay let me tell you my first impression of what I feel like in this I feel like I'm inside an Apple product why because of the use of the greys and the sort of dark greys and this sort of brushed aluminium theme very subtly everywhere in a way that it's supposed to look old with this grey you know how popular grey was in the 90s right everything was a chunk of very ugly grey this isn't ugly grey it is still grey but it's been sort of tarted up made nicer detailed to look like it's from 2023 again still goes back to that same concept Imagine somebody in the 80s thinking about what life would be 50 years from the 80s. This is what they would have probably come up with. Big screens in the front. Everything sort of goes in place really well, but it's still the color palette of the 80s. It's still the color palette of what the exterior is sort of harking back to. And that's great because that's what people need to feel inside one of these cars. It's futuristic, yet it's grounded in maybe their childhood. Look, at the end of the day, it's an electric car. You've got a whole bunch of space. You've got a flat floor. You've got the batteries underneath you here. Seats are great. Very comfortable. Steering wheel looks great. It looks like a home pod from Apple. It's got these little squares in the middle here as well. And on the whole, this is just a very, very nice place to be. And again, as I mentioned, it is huge. I mean, look how airy. Look how spacious this all is. And the other thing I really, really, really like are the switch gears. But the one thing I really don't like is the fact that the gear shifter or the drive selectors on the side here and unlike Mercedes-Benz where you can just flick it with one of your fingers in this you do have to take your finger or your hand off the wheel go grab that, turn it and sort of turn it back to whatever mode you want and then drive along you can't cheat it by just flicking it you gotta actually sort of manhandle it a bit Okay, so as I mentioned, this is going to be a very basic first impression of what the car feels like because we're only getting to drive it for about 30 or 40 kilometers and although I can give you a more in-depth version of what it drives like, I don't really want to because I want to drive it in various different scenarios, not only rural roads in Goa and a bit of highway, but I want to do it in the city, I want to do it in a more livable sort of experiential way. So we'll do that, a separate video on this car and of course comparison tests with other cars in this sort of range both normal fuel and electric very very shortly but for now first impressions it drives like any electric car would but there are some little bits and pieces that really seem to stand out now first being it is still running on a set of 20 inch wheels and tires which makes this car less SUV like which by which I mean less say wallowy less sort of moving about and a little more hatchback like in the way it drives it's dynamic it feels really planted it feels really sort of direct it feels really great now yes you could put better tires on it and it would feel even better or even nicer to drive but i think this is just a very very good balance we're gonna be squeezing past an omni there on these very rural roads that was very close nonetheless it drives really really well especially on these tight twisty roads in rural Goa that of course are best suited for scooters and tiny little hatchbacks now you still have 200 plus horsepower you still have 350 newton meters of torque those are great figures and it sort of drives equivalent to what you would expect those figures to drive don't expect this to be so fast that it sets some crazy 0 to 100 times but it still feels it feels brisk enough to let you pull away from a stoplight or to let you pull away from like a point in traffic where you just need a bit of a point and squirt action it is fun in the most electric clean sort of sterile of ways it's not gonna be a hot hatch but i think for people who really want something that stands out for people who want something that drives like an ev should at 50 lakh rupees, 
this is probably as good as it gets. And that's about it. That's really all I have to say about the Ionic 5 for now because this car really deserves to be driven a lot more before we can get a full-fledged video to you. And because it is this cool a uh, car, it has or it deserves a proper good old-fashioned power drift level super super cool video doesn't it that's what you guys really want to see from us all the time so i promise when we do bring that to you it will be an epic just one thing though let me leave you with this that 631 kilometers of range that they keep talking about realistically if you drive it absolutely normally like you would do with a petrol or diesel car you're going to get about 450 or so and if you drive it really gently maybe maybe 500.